Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to give you my complete guide on everything you need to know on how to keep and look after cherry shrimp. I've been keeping shrimp for several years now and I've learned so much about them. So I thought it would be a really good idea by sharing my experiences with keeping shrimp so that you guys can keep them successfully too. Cherry shrimp are a great addition to any community aquarium. They're also good in planted tanks as they can be used as a cleanup crew for the aquarium. One reason why I like keeping shrimp in my aquariums is that they add another level of detail into your aquariums. It gives you something extra to look at in your aquarium in addition to the plants and fish you might have in there. I highly recommend anyone to keep shrimp, they're really great little creatures to keep. So with that all being said, let's get started with this care guide. Cherry shrimp, also known as Neocaridina devii, are a freshwater shrimp that originate from Taiwan. They are found living in streams and rivers all around the country. Interestingly, in the wild, these shrimp are not red, they're brown instead. It's taken many generations of selective breeding to get the red colour you see today. And from the selective breeding process, a lot of different colours have been produced. I'll talk about these different colour variations later on in the video. If these shrimp were red in the wild, they wouldn't last very long. Predators will be able to spot them so easily and they'll end up being eaten. So their natural brown coloration seems the best one for survival. In the wild, the pH of the water these shrimp live in can vary from 6.5 to 8. The temperature of the water they live in can also vary quite a lot too. Depending on the time of year, the water could be between 14 to 29 degrees Celsius. That's around 57 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. You can expect male cherry shrimp to grow to be about one and a quarter inches, which is about three centimeters. Female cherry shrimp grow a little bit bigger. You can expect them to grow to be about one and a half inches, which is around four centimeters in length. The lifespan of a cherry shrimp is between one to two years. But since they are quite easy to breed, they'll replenish their numbers fairly quickly. Let's talk about the behavior of cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp are peaceful scavengers. Throughout the day you'll see them grazing on biofilm and algae that grows on your plants and hardscape in your aquarium. They will be active throughout the day and night. Usually once a month you'll see your shrimp shed their exoskeleton. Because shrimp are invertebrates, the only way they can grow is by shedding their exoskeleton. After the shrimp has shed its exoskeleton, its new shell will be relatively soft. Over the next few days to a week, the shrimp will start to absorb minerals from the water column to harden its shell. During this time, the shrimp will tend to hide away to protect itself from any predators. But after a week or so, you'll see the shrimp return back to its natural behaviour. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, cherry shrimp are scavengers. They eat both animal and plant-based sources of food, which makes them omnivores. Overall, they're generally not fussy eaters, but they do prefer to eat biofilm and algae. So I try to make sure there's lots of hardscaping plants in your aquarium. By having more hardscaping plants in your aquarium, the more surface area you provide for algae and biofilm to grow on. And don't forget, biofilm and algae are free sources of food for your shrimp. This is why cherry shrimp are really good for planted tanks. They can be used to control algae growth in aquascapes but I think they do a really good job at keeping moss nice, clean and healthy. As the shrimp scavenge throughout the moss, it'll start to eat any debris, detritus, dead plant matter and even algae in it. Some people like to feed their shrimp special food that are designed for shrimp. You can get all different kinds of food that might help to improve the colour of your shrimp, but I found my cherry shrimp really enjoy spirulina and algae wafers. As you can tell in the footage in the background, they really love this stuff. If you want to try these spirulina and algae wafers out, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now we'll move on to the tank setup you'll need to keep cherry shrimp. Since cherry shrimp are so small, they don't create a massive bio load. This means you'll be able to keep them in smaller aquariums if you wanted to. Most people say 5 gallons is a good aquarium to keep them in. That's around 18 to 20 litres of water. But like most fish, the bigger aquarium you get, the easier it will be to maintain. I found it was easier to grow and maintain a colony of cherry shrimp in a larger aquarium. Currently I'm keeping my colony of cherry shrimp in a 12 gallon tank, which is around 45 litres. I've also kept Neocaridina shrimp in smaller setups too. Currently I have a colony of yellow shrimp which are a variation of cherry shrimp in a 4.5 litre fish bowl. This kind of setup takes up a little bit more work to maintain so I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. It's also a really good idea to have lots of plants in your aquarium for your shrimp. This will provide them with lots of hiding spaces which will make them feel less stressed out. Since cherry shrimp are so small they can be really sensitive to changes in their water parameters. So it's important to keep these parameters as stable as you can to keep your shrimp happy. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, cherry shrimp can survive in quite a wide range of temperatures. A good temperature range to aim for will be between 18 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. That's around 64 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. If the water in your aquarium starts to get over 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, your cherry shrimp may start to struggle. Because they are so small, their bodies don't do well with high temperatures. So you might need to invest in some fans to cool down your aquarium to help them survive. A good pH to keep them at will be between 6.5 to 7.5. You should try and keep your ammonia, nitrate and nitrites at zero. They can tolerate nitrate levels at 20 ppm but you should always try to keep it as close to zero as you can. So it's a good idea to keep cherry shrimp in a mature aquarium with a filter that's been running for at least a few months. 
In uncycled immature aquariums, the water parameters tend to fluctuate quite a lot, which isn't good for shrimp. A more mature aquarium will have more stable water parameters, which will make your shrimp happier. When it comes to water hardness, a good GH range will be between 4 and 8. And for the KH, anything between 3 and 15 is really good. Since cherry shrimp are hardy and tank bred, they are quite adaptable to live in a wide range of water parameters. One thing you need to watch out for is high levels of copper in your water. Copper is toxic to shrimp and other invertebrates. So before you add any medication to your aquarium, make sure it has no copper in it. You might find some fish foods have trace amounts of copper in them. At trace levels, the copper won't be toxic enough to harm your shrimp, so you don't need to worry about it. Since cherry shrimp are so small, they can turn into very expensive fish food. So you need to be a little bit careful when picking tankmates for them. A good general rule to follow is that if the shrimp can fit in the fish's mouth, the fish will probably end up eating it. My go-to tankmates with cherry shrimp will be nano rasboras. These are like your chili rasboras and galaxy rasboras. Smaller tetra species like neon tetras and ember tetras will do really well with cherry shrimp too. I found that corydoras don't bother cherry shrimp either. I got some pygmy corys living with my cherry shrimp and they don't bother each other at all. Otto cichlids catfish are the same too. Some fish I avoid keeping cherry shrimp with are cichlids and larger gourami species. I would also avoid keeping them with betas too. Betas can be a little bit of a wild card. Depending on the temperament, they might hunt down and eat all your shrimp. And for me, that's a little bit risky, especially if you're paying lots of money for your cherry shrimp too. If you want to keep a large successful breeding colony of cherry shrimp, it's probably best just to keep them by themselves. This way you'll prevent any fish from predating on the shrimp or the baby shrimp too. The one fish that I think is 99% sure that won't eat your baby shrimp are Otto Sinclair's catfish. So I find my tank has seen a lot of baby shrimp, and my cherry shrimp live alongside galaxy rasboars, chili rasboars, pygmy quarries and the Otto catfish I mentioned earlier. So just remember the rule, if the shrimp can fit in the fish's mouth, the fish will probably end up eating it. It will be best to keep these fish out of your tank if you want your cherry shrimp to survive. Cherry shrimp can be a little bit sensitive when you're first introducing them to your aquarium. Because they're so small, they need a little bit more time to adapt to their new water conditions they'll be living in. So what I like to do is use a drip acclimation method to introduce new shrimp to my aquariums. This process will slowly get the shrimp used to the water parameters they'll be living in. I've already made a video on how I do this, so I'll leave a little card in the right hand corner of this video. In my opinion, this is the best way to acclimate any shrimp. There are a couple ways you can tell the difference between male and female cherry shrimp. The first way is by size. Female cherry shrimp will be larger than male cherry shrimp. Also, female cherry shrimp tend to be a lot more colourful compared to the males. Another way to tell the difference between males and females is to look out for the saddle. This is the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. The saddle is near the middle part of the female's body. This is where the unfertilised eggs are stored. If you don't see a saddle, you might see the female shrimp carrying eggs underneath her belly. This will be the best way to determine whether the shrimp's male or female. Breeding cherry shrimp can be a pretty easy process once they've all settled down into your aquarium. Cherry shrimp will reach adulthood between 4-6 to six months. Breeding behaviour usually occurs after molting. I found that doing water changes can help trigger the molting process too. You'll be able to tell if your shrimp has successfully bred based on the location of the eggs on the female. If the eggs have been successfully fertilised, they will move away from the saddle towards the tail and belly region of the shrimp. At this point, the shrimp has become buried. The female cherry shrimp will stay buried for around another 30 days while the eggs start to mature. During this time, you might see a user swimming rest to fan the eggs to make sure they get enough oxygen. After the eggs have matured after that 30 day process, you could expect to see about 20 to 30 baby shrimps. When she gives birth to the baby shrimp, they'll be like miniature versions of the adult shrimp. Most of the time, the baby shrimp will hide away in the plants in your aquarium. They tend to hide away for about a month until they get to about a good size where they won't be eaten by other fish. Roughly about after a month, they should get to about 1cm in length. And between 4-6 to six months, they'll reach adulthood and be fully formed cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp can come in many different grades and colours. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a basic overview of the cherry shrimp grading structure. If you guys want me to make a more in-depth guide on cherry shrimp grading, let me know in the comments below. Here's what I class as a low-grade cherry shrimp. You can see the shrimp has a translucent red kind of look over its body. This will be the most common grade of cherry shrimp you'll see in your local fish shop. You will expect to pay about £1 to £1.50 per shrimp. That's about a dollar or two per shrimp. Here we have a low-grade Sakura cherry shrimp. The red coloration on the shrimp are a lot better compared to the standard cherry shrimp. You tend to see with this grade that the legs don't have much red on them either. At this grade you might expect to pay about £2 to £2.50 per shrimp. That's around 2 to $3 a shrimp. You can also get high grade Sakura cherry shrimp. The difference between a high grade and a low grade Sakura cherry shrimp is based on the coloration of the legs. High grade Sakura cherry shrimp tend to have more red coloration on their legs and it's not as patchy as a lower grade one. A high grade Sakura cherry shrimp could set you back between 3 to £3.50 per shrimp. This will be around 3 to $4 shrimp. 
One of the highest grades of cherry shrimp you can get is called a fire red cherry shrimp or painted fire red cherry shrimp. These cherry shrimp have a really deep, vibrant red coloration on their body. The red coloration will extend to their legs too. With a fire red cherry shrimp, it's very difficult to make out the saddle on the females. The red coloration makes the saddle opaque, which makes it very difficult to see the saddle. With these being on the higher end of the grading system, you'll be paying a lot more per shrimp. In the UK, I've seen prices around four to six pounds per shrimp. Roughly, that's about five to eight dollars a shrimp. The last grade we're going to talk about is a Bloody Mary grade cherry shrimp. At this grade, the cherry shrimp have a really deep crimson red kind of colour. This coloration extends towards the flesh of the shrimp too. Their legs also have a really deep red coloration to them without any patches on them. Just like with the painted fire red shrimp, it's really hard to identify the saddle on the female. For a true Bloody Mary shrimp, I paid about £8 per mine. That's roughly equivalent to about $10 I think. I also just wanted to quickly mention all the different kind of colorations of cherry shrimp you can get. Due to a lot of selective breeding on Neocaridina debii, a lot of colour morphs have appeared. Some of the common colour morphs you might see are yellow, blue and green. You can get a very translucent colour morph called a snowball. And it seems like every couple of years a new colour morph appears. There's such a wide range of colours, it'll be hard to find one that you don't like. So I hope you guys found this care guide useful. Hopefully now you know everything you need to know on how to keep cherry shrimp. If you want to help the channel out, you can become a member by clicking the little join button next to the subscribe button. But if you don't want to do that, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos from my channel, please subscribe.